Hey everyone, we finally have a breath of fresh air for the close range meta after it was dominated by the HRM9 for way too long. For this weekly challenge, there is a new conversion kit for the BP50 that changes it from an AR to an SMG. And as you can see in the clips right here, it's frying people just like the HRM9 or even better. And although the BP50 does less damage per bullet compared to the HRM9, it does have a much higher fire rate which compensates for that. Now after adding all the attachments for both guns, which we'll talk about later on in the video, you can see that the TTK for both of them is very similar when it comes to the chest, but look at the neck shots, this is where the BP50 will shine. So if you have good centering and you usually aim up, this is where you will outgun the HRM9 every single time. But if your centering is bad and you aim low like at the stomach, or like the upper leg, this is where the HRM9 is actually better than the BP50. So this is also a high skill, high reward type of weapon. Now, after adding the conversion kit, you're gonna have five available slots only. The rest is taken by the kit. And for the optic, you won't need it because its sights are actually pretty clean. Now, there's only one problem with the BP50. So if I'm gonna equip one with just the conversion kit, you're going to notice that this weapon has a lot of horizontal wiggle, but not in a way that's controllable. Every time you shoot a bullet, it goes right, left, right, left, right, left. Now in the close range where like it's up to five meters, this won't be an issue. But if an enemy is behind the heady or a little bit further away, this might be an issue because this is something that you can't control. So for that reason, I went with the Komodo heavy muzzle because that eliminates the most of the horizontal recoil. And that's how the recoil is going to look like after using it. You'll notice that a lot of the horizontal randomness is gone and now it's just vertical which is pretty easy to control i also went with the high grain ammunition yes it does add a little bit of recoil if you feel like it's too much for you just replace it with something like the hollow points but the damage at range is beneficial especially when it comes to small maps like rebirth where you don't want to pull out your ar and you want to use your smg but you don't want to use that damage drop off like that sweet spot this covers it at 14 meters now for lasers i usually don't like putting them on smgs because sometimes you want to aim down sight and hold an angle in this case you're gonna have to use it because more, the problem with ars that are converted to smgs is that they have a very slow sprint to fire time that's why you never saw me talk about the mcw with a conversion kit because yes it has a high ttk but at the end of the day the sprint to fire time was really bad and i was never losing a fight versus the mcw i was always winning with the hrm so for that we're gonna go with the kimura ryl 33 laser sight it reduces the sprint to fire time by a massive massive amount and the ads as for the regrip i went with the ccg tag tape it reduces the sprint to fire time only and yes it adds a little bit of recoil but as you saw with these attachments and there's two attachments that add more recoil by just having the Komodo heavy it's very controllable even if i want to shoot a range it feels really nice which is, i don't think i'm going to be shooting with this weapon after 20 meters and now that we're using a laser that is shown when you're aiming down sight the best thing you can do is instead of holding an angle with the laser being shown to where you expect the enemy to be just aim at a wall or a corner that's near to where you might expect him just so that the enemy doesn't see the laser and of course if you want to go with attachments that do not have that much of recoil this is how it feels it doesn't feel that different if anything it's actually almost the same so it's actually better just to keep these attachments that i showed you guys at the start and as for the AR, a lot of people are saying that the RAM 7 is better. To be honest, I feel like that's a skill issue. The SOA Subverter does more damage. It has better damage at range. The only thing is it's a little bit more bouncy, but if you know how to control your recoil, you're set to go. And of course, one of the most important factors that will make it better than the HRM is that it must have also great mobility. So in this case, first of all, you have 60 rounds compared to the 50 rounds on the HRM, which is a huge bonus. Second of all, the splinter fire speed is almost the same. The HRM is better by 7 milliseconds, which is not a problem. The attack sprint speed is actually better with this one. And the ADS time is the same. So this definitely makes it a meta weapon. It competes with the HRM9. But I have to say this. There is a chance that you might not see it in rank because if you're using the BP50 with another AR, then you're stacking and using AR ammo the whole time, which could be a problem, especially with how many times you're going to shoot and hold angles and hold positions. So if you're going to use this in rank, I advise keeping an ammo box and an extra stash or two of AR ammo in your backpack, which could be a problem depending on how your matches go. And if you want to see me using this weapon live, my stream schedule and link are in the description below. Also, I want to say that I have a surprise for you guys in the next video because I have something that is meta, but it's not a gun. And all I'm going to say is even ranked in Crimson and Iridescent lobbies, 
are feeling like pubs just because of this idea that I'm using. And on top of that, it breaks aim assist, so you know it's going to be a good one. And if you guys enjoy honest and skillful content without any bot lobbies or any of that fake stuff going around, then a like and a sub to the channel is highly appreciated.